This is the MMORPG I've been working on. You can maybe hear it in my voice, I have been ill the last two weeks, but still in between those fever dreams I managed to find some time to keep working on the game. Specifically I've been working on the data storage aspect of the game, meaning how do I store things in my world, and in my last video I kind of got excited about how Reddit used to store data and EntityDB was born. EntityDB is my own custom little database that has been optimized for the needs of my my MMORPG. So in this video I'm going to show you the current state of EntityDB, I'm going to demo you the API and in the end I'm going to give you a brief update on the game itself. Before we jump into EntityDB I need to show you the architecture. So this is the world, these are the tiles and there are two different types of things. On one hand we have NPCs, we have dropped items, and we have the world map. And on the other hand, we have things like users. Users have passwords and players. Players have stats, combat stats, and so on. Then we have inventories. We have bank inventories or how much gold a player has. These two things need to be stored differently. So the things on the left side can be stored in memory because we don't really care if we lose them. We can just spawn new NPCs. We can load the map from the file. And things on the right, we need to persist somewhere and right now I'm persisting them in a SQLite database. I'm essentially snapshotting in-memory items and putting them into my SQLite database. And these are the two components of my data storage solution. So on the left hand side we have the transient state and on the right hand side we have the persistent state. The big challenge was for EntityDB to support both types of states. This is how EntityDB works. Let's say we have this player here that has X and Y coordinates, a player name and a sprite for rendering. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create an EntityDB instance of type player. And there is a problem because in software engineering, entities usually are things that can be identified. And things are usually identified using their ID, their identifiers. So let's add an ID to the player. Now we can use EntityDB to create an instance of the player. The whole game is based around a grid two-dimensional array of tiles. So one of the queries that happen often is finding something at a certain location. So this query would find all the players at location 5, 6. This returns an iterable of player. Again, for this we need to tell EntityDB that I would like to maintain a spatial index so I can efficiently find things by their position. Another thing that is possible is to query things in a certain rectangle, like Copilot suggests. Both of these queries will be quite efficient thanks to the spatial true that we've set here. We're using EntityDB to store a player, but so far all of the players are just stored in memory. In fact, the entities are stored in a JavaScript map. What if you want to persist the players to the file system, so we don't lose the players in case the system goes down? For that, there are three configs to set. There is the persistence interval millisecond, let's set it to 1000. This means that EntityDB will take a snapshot of all the entities that changed every 1000 milliseconds, which means in case anything happens, the system goes down, players will lose at most one second of playtime. There is another config that we can set, that's the persistence after change count, let's set it to 10. And this was inspired by how Redis does snapshotting. What it does essentially, it says, if there were 10 entities changed, which means deleted, updated, or created, then we're going to snapshot all the changes. These two configurations essentially mean EntityDB will persist all the changes either every second or every 10 changes, whatever happens first. But where and how does EntityDB persist those entities? We also need to pass in a JSON store. And the JSON store is something that takes a SQLite database. We're passing it into the JSON store and we're setting the JSON store to the EntityDB. And in case we have multiple EntityDBs working with the same JSON store, which is the case in my game, I'm gonna just add a namespace so this EntityDB is only looking at this subset of JSON that is available in the store with the namespace player. And so our database can find things by arbitrary fields, it can run efficient spatial queries, it can persist our entities into an actual database. But what about data migrations? So usually you have migrations that you need to run in order to get your table schema in a, in a certain way that represents your current state of the code. And I also cooked up some solution for that. I haven't used it yet, 
quite in anger, so I don't know whether it will work, but let's see. In order to activate migrations, I need to provide EntityDB a migrations map, which is just a map from an int to a function, and the int represents the current version of the entity that will be migrated to the next version. So EntityDB on startup will check all the entity versions with the version zero, and if there are some entities, it will apply this function and whatever is returned here, it's assumed that this is the new version of the entity that will be written back into the database. So let's say we actually want to change the field name to username or actually player name. So we get an old player of any type because we don't want to maintain types for all the past versions of a player. And we're going to return the new player type, which has a field player name. So we can just go ahead and also adjust the player type here. And obviously we need to fix our query here. And this is how migrations will be run in EntityDB. This is how the game used to look like before the walking update. You were able to walk by clicking one of those adjacent tiles to your player and you had this little clunky UI inventory management and so on. What I'm doing now is that the walking completely changed. It is more of a, in the style of RuneScape where you just click where you want to go and the character will pathfind their way there. Um, I'm using a star on the server, so not on the client to find the shortest path, which works reasonably well. There is some delay when it comes to starting walking. And for rendering, I switch to a completely, absolutely positioned approach. So what I'm doing is all the things in the world are absolutely positioned squares, 80 by 80, and they are layered on top of each other. I'm using the document object model, which is this huge tree in the browser. And you can see there are some issues already. So there are these thin white lines that appear when I walk horizontally and I try to fix that, but it seems to be some kind of sub pixel rendering issues, which I'm most likely not gonna be able to fix uh, everywhere. That's why I've been looking into other ways to render the map and I've been looking at the HTML canvas to do that. But I will give you an update on that in the next video, whether I made the switch or I kept those beautiful white lines. I would love to know what you think about the entity DB approach for an MMORPG. And if anyone knows how to fix those white lines, please just post it in the comments below. If you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe and thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.